you know, a lot of documentarians are getting these amazing opportunities to be true storytellers with material that has been right. turned into scripts, and that's a really exciting thing for them, and I think an exciting thing for the audience. But, you know, you'll see the chat and you'll see the revolt, you know, with what happened with Under the Gun if someone takes too much license and, and modifies that. Do you know what uh, Lisa's degree. referring to? There's a film, which I've actually never seen, but I'm aware of the controversy. It's called Under the Gun. Uh, Katie Quirk was a correspondent, and um, the filmmaker did something which, um, which in truth is, is done a lot in terms of pacing uh, the audio, but apparently she paced the audio between a question to uh, a member of the NRA about the effects of gun violence and am I doing a good job and and the the build the building in of a pause suggested that it, it made an editorial suggestion that there was um, a certain callousness uh, on, on the part of the NRA member and this is a very important point it turns out the NRA member, I believe, was taping the conversation as well. This is something documentary filmmakers have always got to keep yeah. in mind. That's always a possibility for any of us. Any conversation could be Yeah, this taped. is very much of a, um, an ongoing issue. This guy, James O'Keefe, and others are, are making it very much of a practice to try to right, watch he's the, the watchers. He's the acorn guy? Yes, uh, the, right. the guy who, uh, sort of, he's a so-called citizen journalist, but what he is, is he, he's... No, he's a, he's a hard right ideologue, who, but he uses... <laughs> Um, uh, he uses um, videotaping clandestinely right. to try to make a point, though often he will then edit judiciously his own right. Um, right. backstage stuff, as he did, I believe, in an, in an abortion case recently. Right. Or Planned Parenthood. You would know that. Yes, Planned Parenthood. Well, we are, uh, we'll go to questions in a minute, but I just want to wrap up by saying, um, asking where you, we've all seen the business ebb and flow. We've seen the, we're all surprised to see the growth that uh, has happened over the last 10 years. But Lisa, where do you see it going? Where, what's your projection? Um, I mean, I think, I think it's here to stay. I think we've seen, you know, if you chart those 10, 15 years, you know, you and I were involved with Murderball like 15 years ago, right? And you think about, you know, the era of that, that movie and what it did for the form and then, you know, Bowling for Columbine crossing $100 million in the box office and then theatrical starting to shift to home viewing. I think, you know, there have been different renaissances in the true, you know, true story telling documentary form that I've witnessed over, like you said, a long period of passion for the space. And I'm sort of out of the closet now where, we get to build a commercial business because you, you know, the audience wants these stories. They want to engage with them for 8 to 10 to 12 hours. I mean, we sold a 10-hour series that was financed independently in Sundance for Steve James and participant. And you know, even people like Steve James, who's been doing it for such a long time from Hoop Dreams to now, you know, if you look at Abacus and his series coming on at the same time, and you see the development of his own documentary filmmaking style a little bit inside that work, it just feels like you know, it's here to stay, and the, you know, the channels are really going to stick with it. We used to worry, you know, three, four years ago, five years ago, that maybe someone would have their documentary strand, and then two years later, they would no longer well, have do. it. Sometimes they do. Sometimes I've they do, some... but I think it's robust enough now. And I think, look, we have the Disney SVOD coming online next year. We have the Apple service coming online. They're doing nonfiction series, both of them. Um, so it's just, it's continuing to grow. I think other basic cable channels are going to be getting into the space, it seems like, robustly. So... Um, you know, I, I feel like, and then who knows, some documentary over the top networks on their own, like Docsville could grow to really, really big audience penetration. So I think, you know, the, the broad view is super positive. Um, the financiers are super interested in it. The talent wants to make these things in addition to their other scripted businesses and things that they do. So I don't know if that's You, also, you also see a much a greater blurring of the line in terms of programming at networks. Like, uh, you know, I can speak for our, our network at least there. Whereas we, we incorporate documentary series and features and everything else right alongside. We weave it right in with the ongoing programming structure of scripted series and everything else. Um, and it's great. And I think we also try to create one voice, really. We're trying not to create two separate strands of like, here's what we do in documentary and here's what we do in scripted. I think that the, the kind of style of storytelling, the breadth of sto uh, stories that we take on, I think we try to have them all weave closer together so that does, I think, make it a little bit more here to stay. I think it flows much better in the, in the overall programming. Of that it. evolution also implies that each network or platform has sort of a very clear, but really, you know, content authenticity and voice-driven brand around what they're making. It's no longer the 
lower third MTV signal, that's the brand, it's the voice of the content and that, that continuity across scripted, non-scripted. Um, and so when you're thinking about building a project, you really do have to think about where it's going to end up. And I think what's naturally happening in the sales cycle is that selling is becoming more pre-selling because creating those partnerships and those long-term media marketing opportunities for you know, the Netflixes of the world to take RFK out, let's say, or any of the networks that Alex is working with, bringing out you know, longer and longer form storytelling opportunities and, and pieces of IP to a marketplace, you need more time, and so it's, I think, creating this really, back to your question, robust opportunity for partnership from financiers and voices who want to tell something with partnership from networks and platforms to really build them and give them more breathing room and more time to be more ironclad and, and not put those filmmakers at, you know, in tough situations for telling their stories. Dawn, you bullish on the market? <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, at this point, um, there's, it's, it's a, it's a, it's also a nice community of relationships. So, you know, I've I've done um, work for Alex. You know, we did I did one of the episodes of the New Yorker Presents series, um, which and one of the things I love about you know Alex really is out there, I think, in showing different models. And I, I think one of the things that you keep coming back to is gathering different filmmakers, but not telling us what to do. And that has been really great, yeah. you know. Have you ever tried to tell Alex what to do? <laughs> <laughs> but sometimes the people who don't, aren't told what to do tell, like to tell other people what to do. Um, but, uh, and, and I think that showing that that not only works, but is fantastic, um, has been a really good education for the marketplace, that um, you can have different approaches within kind of a, you know, a, a band of drama, but you know, people are, are coming to me for, with different stories. Um, I think it's really interesting now the traditional reality television producers are now coming and saying, you know, they want to do it, but they, they, would, they kind of are thinking they maybe need a director who's experienced in our, in our form of storytelling, which is really interesting. Before, I think they, they wanted us to conform to their model, mm -hmm. um, and now they're coming to ours. So, um, yeah, it's you know it's really fun. A great job. It's never boring. Um, Alex, every time I talk to you, you say I'm really going to do less this year. I'm, I'm not going to do I'm not going to do as many films at once as I. Um, and and then I turn around and you're doing more. Uh, well, I, I am. I mean, the I should say that a lot of what goes on in my company has very little to do with me, and I, I may not have. Um, you know, pulled back as much personally uh, in terms of my own projects as 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 I might pretend that I like, but um, but uh, you know a lot of what's going on in my shop now is is the ability to grow projects that are happening you know with very little involvement or supervision by me or at least no direct involvement and and that I think is a great thing because what we've been trying to do is to create an environment for people in which to do their best work, to give them a sense of experience in terms of editorial and legal and production, but at the same time to encourage them to, you know, to pursue their creative vision. And kind of extending something that we were talking about earlier in, in terms of working with a number of different broadcasters, I, I, you know, I describe that from a production standpoint as, as being sensible in terms of uh, being able to have a number of different clients. But I think it's also from, looked at from an interesting creative perspective. You know, you want to partner with a network that shares your vision for this particular project. And that's not always the case. There's no one size fits all. And you want to be with an executive or with a network that is really going to go for this project. And which is just as important in its own way as having a filmmaker who is passionate about that one single project. Because you're going to be spending a lot of time on it. You want to be sure to pick the right partner for that, for that good reason. And that's why I think I'm so, you know, so many networks seem to be engaged in this that it makes me hugely uh, encouraged and enthusiastic about the future. 